Hello, hello. Welcome back to Teach Languages Online, the podcast giving you the best advice for your online language teaching business. My name is Lindsay of Lindsay Does Languages, and I am your host for this show and for this episode. And this episode, we're talking about how to do a big batch of content creation so you can have it all squirreled away for the autumn if you are in autumn in the northern hemisphere we'll get into that but first i just want to say a little note head over right now lindsidaslanguages.com forward slash o t s k because you will see everything that you need to know about the online teaching starter kit which i'm going to be honest with you is the best way that we can work together when it comes to teaching online and huh, yeah just head over there you'll see what I'm talking about I'm not gonna give you any spoilers <laughs> and yeah I'm excited to uh to work together that's it I'm not gonna say more than that all right then so I said to squirrel away for the autumn I'm, I'm always really conscious that when I talk about seasons I'm talking from my kind of UK British mind being in the UK perspective of that so for me end of August is here summer is over autumn setting in I know for a lot of people in like Australia and New Zealand it's kind of the opposite and then obviously there are some people who have that lovely two season thing of like lovely tropical six months and then lovely tropical monsoony rains for six months and like so seasons yeah tricky but I'm talking from my reference point so I'm not saying that to like exclude or to you know diminish anyone's seasonal existence but just to come from my own reference point and so for me and for me I find autumn a really great time to kind of sit in on those rainy days get plenty of content ideas squirreled away so that you're ready for that next season of business but this works any time of year right? We're going to talk about how to create three months worth of content drafts in just one day. Genuinely. And like I say, I'm talking autumn. This works anytime. It's a very, very simple process. Number one, we're going to start by collecting ideas because you can't create anything if you've not got any ideas. I mean, you can, but often, or you can try it often results in a blank page and a flickering cursor, right? So to avoid that scenario and to save us time and energy wasted on the wrong stuff, we're going to start with some idea curation. So we've got some exciting things to get us going. First of all, we're going to draft your list. Chances are you've already got a few ideas floating around your head, things that maybe you've thought, oh yeah, I'd like to write more about that. That would make a really good blog article or oh, that would be such a good video. Write everything down everything it could be a solid title for a piece of content it could be a single word topic of just a thing that you need to talk more about or it could be a really wordy description of what you want to say it doesn't matter get it all noted down get it out of your head we're going to refine it as we go second create rough categories now at the minute in our kind of example scenario we've just drafted out some ideas That could be a really full page. It could just be three things at the top of the page. It could be blank right now, no problem. But it does help to have some rough categories in mind. Now, not only does this help with the process of creation for you, but it also means that you have the chance to then select the most relevant topics that will appeal to the right kinds of people that will like reach out in give people kind of the prelude stuff that you want them to know before they join your product your service when they before they start working with you right you can kind of control that with your category selection so for example if you want to work with intermediate learners you do not have to waste your time writing posts suitable for beginners don't make the mistake of feeling that you have to (laughs) have everything available for everyone from day one of learning a language no you can be the person that is the best person for intermediate learners and a quick note here as well this is the opposite in the other direction so it's always worth considering the end goal of where people want to be so that content of maybe let's go with a really simple example let's say it's for advanced learners 
that may not be right for them right now, but if there's aspiration to be an advanced learner, then that's inspiring. So that stuff you can still write, right? Because you're going to kind of attract people that want to be an advanced learner as well as who already are. Does that make sense? But if you're kind of playing in the kiddie pool of like just adding to the already massive, massive overwhelm of choice for beginners, you're kind of wasting your time unless that is what you really want to focus on, right? So that's just something as a, as a bit of an example that's worth considering. Next up, as we're building up our category ideas, we've got some rough ideas drafted, answering FAQs. So if you're drawing a bit of a blank on your own ideas for what to write about, it can be really helpful to think back or even actively browse your inbox, your DMs for frequently asked questions. What do people want to know about? What are they asking you time and time again? Different people coming to you with the same questions. And like, (laughs) I know you have them (laughs) because I do too. And if you can repurpose your response into one solid piece of content on that topic, then you've always got a link to share with them. You've always got something that you can say, oh, yeah, I have the answer to that. Try this link, try this, this blog, try this video, try this podcast, whatever it is, right? So answer FAQs and that can help to bulk up your ideas as well. Next up, answer the public and Google Trends as well. So if you are perhaps thinking, okay, that's great, but I'm new here. No one is asking me questions yet. No problem. Or even if you have questions and you want more ideas, still do this. And that is to use tools like Answer the Public and Google Trends to generate commonly searched for questions and phrases. So start with a simple word or a short phrase, just like learn French, right? And then discover what else people are searching for with that phrase, connected to that phrase. So with Answer the Public, this will give you where you've got like questions. So you'll have a little section that says why. So it might be why should I learn French? Why do people learn French? Why do why is it hard to learn French? Why do people say it's easy to learn French, right? All of these different things. When you've got that longer phrase and you know that that's what people are searching for, sometimes you see them and you're like, oh, the answer is obvious. <laughs> if the answer is obvious, write it because that's what you're going to make a really good piece of content about because you clearly know it inside and out. Now, when you've collected ideas, I guarantee some will be absolute gold and you want to just go off and write them straight away. Some will be kind of duds and some will be somewhere in the middle where it's like, "Mm, yeah, I'm intrigued, but I need more time to sit on this idea. All fine. There's like a spectrum of this, right? It's all good. So what we want to do now is take those ideas, just sit them to one side for a second and think about how with your content you can include promotions because the worst thing that you can do is keep your content as a separate entity to your actual products and services i used to do this too i thought oh i can't mention that i teach languages in my blogs oh no in fact that's why (laughs) that's why i'm here now because i thought "Mm, maybe if i write a blog that says 12 tips to teach on skype then people will think oh she teaches on skype maybe i'll email her and want to learn with her on Skype, right? That's not what happened. What happened is I wrote that post, 12 tips to teach languages on Skype, and teachers started getting in touch with me, not learners, right? So make sure that you actually have some space and some connection between your content and your products and services so that you can include promotions when you can both live launches and evergreen offerings so first up here consider your live launches so the first thing i recommend is we've now got all of our ideas kind of sat like in their big list in their categories before we just go through and add a date in order of how, when we had the ideas we want to do it a bit more strategically a little bit cleverer than that right so assess your calendar figure out when would fit for you to do a live launch in the coming months if you want to right and remember as well live launches don't always have to be huge they can be and they can be lots of fun that way but it could be something that you do maybe it's like a flash sale or something kind of small or for one weekend or just very kind of 
bubbling over just via email or whatever. It could be something small. It could be huge. So maybe that means then that for one month, you focus your content on a particular topic that is related to one particular online course you have. I'll give you an example of how this could work. So let's say you have an online course called French Grammar 101. Some content ideas for a month before that live launch could be what all learners get wrong about French grammar, the eight most common French grammar mistakes in brackets and how to avoid them, why improving your French grammar will help you speak fluently, what to know before studying French grammar. And as we said before, these all have the chance to act as prelude content to the course itself. So what we don't want to do is kind of cannibalize the course by rehashing it all into a selection of blog or podcasts or videos And then people have no reason to join the course because they've got everything they need from all of (laughs) all of the promotion that you did for it. So instead, you can share like, you know, a taste of um, some common mistakes, a little bit maybe touching on the course itself, perhaps, but not fully. Why French grammar is worth learning and giving people the information they need to know before they get started. So with those mistakes, with what people get wrong about French grammar, perhaps those mistakes and how to avoid them you are talking about like a little taster this is like a sample in a food shop right little cheese platter with a little square of cheese on a cocktail stick this is what you're sharing with this content so it's a taste of what doing what your um what your course includes but it's not just like (laughs) the entire um video scripts that you made just put into blog form right Second, include affiliate content. So there may be seasons when live launches just aren't an option. And in those moments, it can be a really great opportunity to create some evergreen and always relevant affiliate content. So that way, you're not just thinking, oh, I'll just put that out, it doesn't matter. I'll just share that blog, oh, that video will do, whatever. You've actually still got some actual smart strategy behind it because these are evergreen right so this means that if you're an affiliate for an always open product create content that is connected to that particular product and that's what you can be sharing when you are not in a sort of live launch season um, because it's going to be evergreen and finally here leave space so i know that not everyone works in the way that I've described above, right? Of like filling in and having the calendar and it's, <laughs> and you add it in and it's very um, well scheduled. I know that that doesn't work for everyone, right? For some people, the thought of a fully planned schedule just doesn't create clarity and calmness. It's more stressful than anything, right? That's totally fine. If you know that this is you, then you can simply leave space and still generate ideas from step one, still get creating, step three, which we'll get to in a minute, but you can leave the scheduling to happen more organically if you prefer. And equally, if you do like a good solid schedule for stuff like this, then I still recommend having a little bit of flexibility to leave some space when perhaps things come up last minute and you do want to talk about them, or maybe something happens and like globally in the world and it's really important (laughs) and you have all these ideas bubbling and you need to talk about it you have some space that you can move things about a little bit step three then so we've talked about collecting our ideas we've talked about how we're going to include promotions now we want to actually get creating we want to make the stuff sometimes it can be so fun (laughs) collecting ideas and planning out a schedule that the actual creation becomes an afterthought and we don't want that. We want to be better than the countless kind of mediocre corners of the internet when it comes to content and we can be, so we're gonna make it that way. So there are a couple of, there are really two broad options here, to be honest. Number one, batch your content. So this means that you get it all done in one go. This could be that you draft lots of content all at once, you then record it all on another day, you then finalize it on another day, Or it could be that you do all of those various tasks and stages for one piece of content on one day. Personally, for me, I like to do lots of writing in one go, then lots of recording, then editing, then graphics, and then space out the publishing. However, it's really about playing to your strengths and going with what works best for you. 
The other option here is regular calendar time. So the alternative to batching is adding regular time onto your calendar that is specifically allocated for specific tasks. Specifically. <laughs> I said specific a lot in that sentence. If you find it difficult or kind of unproductive to batch, then this can be a really useful alternative to ensure that stuff still gets made. So again, there's no right or wrong way to do this. Just make sure that you leave time, leave space to actually create everything that you've planned out. And with that, you know, you've got then the first two first sort of stages of like collecting your ideas, including promotions, having a rough schedule. That is one day easy. You can get the drafts done. That could be even a morning, right? And then we move into step three in the afternoon and we are drafting everything out in one afternoon for the coming few months. It, it happens. <laughs> it sounds like a lot of work, but if you have a day set aside, you can get this done. So your content creation is kind of squirreled away and ready to go for the whole coming season. Highly recommend this process. It's actually a lot of fun when you get into it too. Um, and then of course I recommend treating yourself at the end. Little treat, take yourself out to a coffee shop, whatever, whatever works for you. Just make sure that you, you acknowledge, yay, I did the thing. And um, yeah, as I said at the beginning, definitely, definitely head over to lindsaydoeslanguages.com forward slash O-T-S-K. Have a little read. I'm not going to say more than that on this episode, but just have a read. And um, yeah, all I will say is I look forward to working with you. All right, that's it. Mystique over. Now you can go to the Lincoln and, <laughs> and have a little look. All right. I will speak to you very soon. If you have any questions, as always, you can email me, lindsay at doeslanguages.com. And yeah, I'm looking forward to the next episode. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you. Bye.